Hello everybody, Danny or Mackum here, and today I want to talk a little bit more about Yusuf Nurkic. So I'm going to talk about last night's game versus Philadelphia, and I want to also talk about uh, actual um, facts type video basis, rather than kind of a let's talk basis like I did on the uh, video that's just about, if not already, at uh, 2K views. Which, by the way, thank you guys so much. That blew my mind because I had just started this channel, and YouTube's algorithms don't usually support that kind of uh, well view support. So, again, thank you so so much. I really appreciate it and all the comments and input. Without further ado, let's get into the game from last night. Portland entered Philad, or excuse me, I should say that uh, Philadelphia entered Portland. Excuse my dyslexia last night, and it ended up being a really uh, hard-fought, tough game for um, both teams, quite frankly. Um, in fact, they even went to an overtime. The Blazers had a hard time uh, maintaining their lead, as usual, but they barely prevailed and pulled out over the team trust the process. Yusuf Nurkic, by halftime, he had 13, 7, and 6, and 5 at the time. And that was at halftime, so I mean, that that's incredible. Midway, I believe, through the third quarter, he was already on a triple-double watch. Actually, I think it was near the beginning of the third quarter, because he ended up obtaining two quick assists and ended up getting to eight. Unfortunately, though, for the rest of the game, he ended up going for points and rebounds and didn't really end up getting those two assists anymore. In fact, he stuck with eight assists even throughout the overtime of the game. So, he could have been Mr. Tri-Dub last night, but unfortunately, he didn't quite prevail on that. However, he did have a 2020 game. Yusuf Muttertruck in Nurkic, the Bosnian, Bosnian beast, is truly a beast. He got 28 points, 20 boards, 8 assists. Before we officially, of course, start getting into his overall stats in the game last night and start talking about little factoids of more reasons, basically, why not only should you not sleep on him, but instead you should actually be excited for him, especially if you're here in Portland, or at least you're a Trailblazers fan. The first thing you notice, especially when I look at the box score, is that Robert Covington made a heck of an impact that, that, that he's just not getting credit for. He played 38 minutes in the game, Robert Covington had 24 points on 10 for 21 shooting, he was 4 for 8 from downtown, he had 13 boards, so he's playing like a 6-7 power forward last night, and he had two assists, two steals along with a block in the game, which is insanity for somebody like Robert Covington. And he actually managed to play good defense, go figure, at least statistically it looks like it. Uh, Dario Saric continues to impress as well. Another reason why you just, the league just has not, more reason that the league isn't playing I remotely enough attention to the European players in Europe of what could be. But Darius Sarge played 40 minutes for the Sixers and he had 28 points on 11 for 16 shooting and 4 for 7 from downtown on 2 for 3, two, 2 for 3 from the line. And he ended up getting 9 boards, assist, 2 steals in the game. However, he did manage to end up getting 5 turnovers, which ain't pretty. But 11 for 16 shooting and he got total of 28 points. I mean, he literally led the way for the Sixers. And then on Portland's side, Yusuf Nurkic in his 37 minutes finished with 28 points and 9 for 18 shooting and ended up shooting 10 for 13 from the free throw line along with getting 20 boards, which 7 of those were offensive boards and he ended up getting 8 assists, 2 steals, and 6 blocks. The guy almost had a Boone and Crockett in his pocket. He almost had a 5x5. Five five. If he could have gotten 3 more steals, Yusuf, Muttertruck, and Nurkic would have had a Boone and Crockett in his pocket. He would have had a 5x5 five five game. That is just insanity. You know, a lot of guys, especially at his level, you think, okay, well, obviously that's got to be 40 plus minutes, right? He probably had to play just about the entire game. He played actually three minutes under 40 minutes. So 28, 20, 8, 2, and 6 for Yusuf Nurkic. And he ended up only having three turnovers. So his assist to turnover ratio was about three assists. Also, Yusuf Nurkic has hit almost all of his free throws. He's averaging about 78% as a blazer, whereas this season with the Nuggets, he averaged 49%. 
So you can just tell that Yusuf Nurkic's confidence instantly skyrocketed once he was here. And not only that, but it, it instantly you could tell he was so truly thrilled to be here. Remember in the in my video about him, he actually I mentioned that he actually when he first got here, he just kept having this huge grin and smile on his face and this bright twinkle in his eye. You could tell he was so he was like a kid in a candy shop. He was so thrilled to be here. You could legitimately see it, rather than the dead inside kind of a interview that you know all these players always have if they just signed with a team or they just you know they, they sound like a freaking corpse that's not even animated. They're just like you know I'm so happy to be here. It's a very exciting time. You know, great group of guys. Um, uh, you know we're gonna. I think we're gonna get a lot of wins this season. Uh, I'm very excited. Like instead, Yusuf Nurkic was like full bo bright eye, bushy tail, and so that's it was so cool. But last night, a lot of the Blazer analysts and a, I think even the NBA analysts in general actually ended up commenting on the fact that you can tell that Yusuf is extremely happy being here because even on the court, every single game, he's has this big giant smile on his face quite frequently. Which they say you never really see that with any players unless there's like a big play made, but for him, he's just always smiling. Anyway, so Yusuf Nurkic had one hell of a game last night. I mean, he just has not had to have an adjustment period. And also last night, that means that his game was nearly equivalent to his former teammate Nikola Jokic from the next door eastern neighbor to Bosnia and Herzegovina in Serbia. So I mean, holy crap. It just blows my mind that he's like these two are almost emulating each other now. It's just incredible, and I love it. You don't almost expect like they they grew up training together or something. It's weird. So all in all, you know, last night's game it wasn't too bad, but uh, as usual, it could have been better. Obviously, in fact, we could have if we played correctly, we could have prevented the overtime. But Yusuf Nurkic, man. So, without further ado, from since we've covered last night's game, let's get into the facts. I have lined up of not only why you should never sleep on Yusuf Nurkic, but as a Portland fan, why you should be extremely, extremely enthralled and excited for the future with Yusuf Nurkic, because holy crap is it bright. So, fact number one I gotta bring out is predictable, and I said this in the other video, and it was said a lot last night by Blazer fans, but the guy Yusuf Nurkic, he's only 22 years old. That's it. He's just 22. He's extremely young. It's incredible. Talk about the league sleeping on him and him being a, a major dark horse. It is, blows my mind that he's he's doing as good as he is but holy crap like 22 years of age what the heck could that bring for his future especially if he he gains more stamina and does that uh strength and conditioning specifically like conditioning um camp this uh this off season and keeps working on his conditioning consistently not only will his durability go up because he won't have that excess weight on him that's bogging him down and yanking, you know, really stressing his body, especially his knees and stuff. But th there's no telling what the heck this guy could do. He actually legitimately, considering he's fairly consistently playing like this and showing he's versatile, he can do just about everything. I mean, this guy <laughs> seriously could become one of the greatest to play the game. It's insanity. Just think about that. My god. Fact number two of why Portland fans should be excited and why you, know, you, you, you should never sleep on a, a wood a bosnied beef is the fact that, well again, you know, he, he's extremely, extremely versatile, which is huge. You know, the guy obviously can score consistently, he's amazing down on the block and in the post, especially on post-ups. Um, even post-drives, he's really good, he's great on the pick and roll. He has incredible offensive awareness um, that includes with passing vision in IQ. He has a sky high level of that. He's apparently now loving to frack for fouls and get to the line to shoot them, and with confidence, clearly. And the guy can rebound. I mean, he's not only is he seven foot, but he's very, he's very, you know, big and bulky. He has a lot of muscle on that frame of his. 
it just you know again it blows my mind that he's he's incredibly he's just that incredibly well set for this um he evenly crashes the board so he like last night he had seven offensive boards and 13 defensive rebounds if i looked at his past games there anybody does you can see that he pretty consistently is crashing both ends and he's still managing to also get five to six blocks you know anywhere between like three and six blocks and per game pretty consistently since becoming a blazer it's incredible um so he can he can still affect those shots he can still uh, block them he has a lot of hustle to his game which is why he can grab so many rebounds like he did last night he can still uh be able to make the the quick dime to drop to somebody he can still get steals and he still can block the heck he can just have an absolute block party on the team like he did last night six blocks insanity so again, you know, he's extremely versatile on both ends of the floor. He's extremely, extremely effort giving. Like I, I don't think I've seen a work ethic like this in a hell of a long time. And his hustle is absolutely insane. Holy crap! It actually, his hustle reminds me so much of uh, the grindfather himself, Tony Allen, and even a little bit of Shane Battier in his prime. I mean, you know, especially those two, are, of course, are mainly defensively. And sometimes with rebounds, but I mean, the extreme dedication, heart, and hustle it takes to play defense, let alone to get right back on offense or vice versa, let alone to just hustle consistently like that, always be hustling, always, you know, be doing everything on both sides of the floor, it tells you that this guy has more heart than most people in the league combined, probably. It's, it's something you just, especially nowadays in the NBA, you're not really going to see, and so it's so epic and of course portland you know we we love love our uh hot guys that have a lot of heart in for, for the game and are still super humble like you can tell this guy is one of the most humble dudes to play the game he still is more than happy to you know talk with a fan during a game or uh, share something with them or them share some let them share something with him he's happy to go give them a a high five or something if they offer it mid game or whatever. Um, he's always has a smile on his face. You know, he you can tell that this guy also is extremely loving of fans. Like instead of you know like oh don't touch me you're a fan you're beneath me like a lot of big stars you like don't touch Chris Paul or something. It's like okay then you know this guy would probably actually bark back like what the heck are you doing? Why is that necessarily a bad thing? <laughs> Are they too peasantry for supposedly us to make contact? Like, what, are they going to kill us? You know, it's... But... So that that's that's huge. And I guess as a number three fact, that's definitely what I got to throw in there. Is that he's extremely, extremely humble. He has a lot of humility. It's incredible. And that's so rare in today's game. Number four, obviously, is that he has huge potential. And it, it's blatant every game he plays. His potential is oozing, like, and he knows it. Like, Yusuf himself knows it, obviously. And he's obviously trying to work as hard as he can to go as high as he can. And the thing is with his potential is it's only as high as the as the boundary you put on it. It's only as high as the cap you put on yourself. So if you think that you you can't get better. At a certain point, that means that's your cap you've put on yourself. But you've only put that on yourself. So if you don't give yourself a cap for growth, you can just keep getting better. And that's one of the biggest things I think hurts a lot of, especially younger players, is they always see this cap that other people put on them, or they have put on to themselves. Like, oh, my ceiling is so far up. But the problem is that ceiling indicates they see themselves hitting a certain point where they can't get any better. This is just a boundary. But that's not actually true, because potential is literally endless. If you don't put that cap on it, if you don't put that ceiling on it, if you don't put some figurative boundary on it, you don't let other people do that, then your potential is truly limitless and endless. You can keep growing, and I, I am pretty confident it looks like Yusuf already knows that. And he's hacking at it. But being the humble guy is, he's not telling anybody that. He's not telling anybody about his potential. He's not talking about his own game. In fact, more often than not, if you listen to what when he talks about what he talks about when he's in interviews, this guy is bringing me right into my fifth fact, which is that he is the most team-oriented player I've ever seen, let alone fan-oriented. I mean, 
He is so incredibly committed to the team. He is so incredibly committed to the fan base. It is insane. Like, there needs to be a new word created for it. He needs his own... He needs his first... You know, he needs his name. His full name, Yusuf Nurkic, as a new... Brand new key on a keyboard. That's what he needs. Just so, like, every time he's... You know, now that he can... Once he starts really consistently playing like this, all you have to do during the game is just hit that button, Yusuf Nurkic, and you can tweet it out. That's how huge he is. And yes, I now have a consistently skyrocketing bias where it just grows like wildfire with loads of wind and dry weather and heat on a constant basis. Every game I become more of a fan of this dude. Like I've never once been this big of a fan of any NBA player ever. That's how big of a fan he's making me and it just keeps skyrocketing. Fact number six. He is still slept on. He is still being doubted. He's still basically having these people by doubting him, by sleeping on him, having these people therefore whether they realize it or not, put a huge chip on his shoulder. Um, and just being the biggest motivators. Like, it, it's insane. Which also fits perfectly with the Portland culture. For example, last season, the only reason why we made it as far as we did was because we were being slept on, we were being hated, we were being doubted. Everybody across the league was like, nah, the Blazers are gonna suck this season. And we didn't. We actually did shockingly well and we were doubted when we played against the clippers the slippers well the slippers yes people argue that it's like oh well their two main stars got injured you gotta remember even when they were in there and they were playing extremely well and they didn't have injuries in that same game they got injured we were actually leading them we were just barely but we were leading them and we clearly had more hearts they may have had a little more effort and a little more skill, but we had a little more heart. And uh, and we were still being doubted. In fact, I believe, if I remember correctly, early in that game, one of the national commentators even doubted us right then. Like, no, they're, they're not going to get past this team, no way. Like, they're just not good enough. They might run it six games, but they're not going to do this. <laughs> and we beat them that night, obviously. But we had already beaten them pretty much beforehand because of all of that that doubt, all that sleeping on us. And so that's what happens with Portland. Anyway, so that that have to be my my number six fact is the fact that people are still sleeping on him and doubting him and not giving him any more credit, even though he's due more than just a little more credit. <laughs> a little more attention. I mean wow. And uh for that well, final reason um why you should not sleep on Yusuf Nurkic, let alone why the laser fans should be so incredibly thrilled out of their damn minds for having this guy on our team. And you gotta remember, he's in his, I believe, second season this season, uh, which would mean that his two-year team options are ahead of us, which means that we at least have him for two more years. Obviously, I'm, I, I'm as confident as can be without, you know, anybody knowing in the future that Neil O'Shea will obviously accept those team options both seasons but uh yeah so I the future is so bright for this 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 kid and I can't believe I can actually say that because he's a year younger than me for God's sake it is so weird it's not it's not like it does it's not it doesn't make me feel any older it's just the fact that it's just weird because especially considering for a guy who really only got into Paying attention to the NBA, let alone the Blazers in 2010, is where I really started to actually willingly and voluntarily myself pay attention to it without cues or something. You know, that makes it that much more odd and weird. But that's it for this video, everybody. So I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please do remember to leave a like if you did enjoy. And if you uh, didn't or didn't like something about the video, uh, if you didn't like something about the video, please leave a comment telling me what it was, because I really could use that input, I really would appreciate it, and uh, if I can fix it, I will do my best to do so. If you just have ideas I could implement, or work with, or try out, then please do let me know about that, because again, I appreciate that greatly, and I hope you guys stay safe, and have a great day or night wherever you are, and I hope to see you in the next video. Please do subscribe for more videos like this, I think that I'm probably going to pick up a little more of a focus, obviously, on NBA content. So, that be it, stay safe. And uh, see you later. Bye-bye, everybody.